today's video is on multiple linear regression. So before you can view this video, I advise you to watch the, the, the last video on simple linear regression because it is quite similar because you need to understand uh, the, the, the theory of simple linear regression and then only it will be easier for you to understand what is multiple linear regression. So what is the difference between the simple linear and multiple linear regression? If in simple linear regression, we are looking at the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable, one dependent variable and one independent variable. Whereas in multiple linear regression, we are looking at the impact of two independent variable to one dependent variable. So it can be more than one independent variable. It can be two, it can be three, it can be four, and so on meaning that it is more than one independent variable. So we are looking at the change in dv as a result to iv. So the dependent variable here, or y, will change as a result of the impact of the independent variables. So when independent variable changes by one unit, it might cause changes in y. Okay, to make it more clearer, y or the dependent variable is equal to the intercept of b0 or beta 0 plus beta 1 independent variable 1 plus beta 2 independent variable 2 and the list goes on into beta and and independent variable n plus epsilon so i'm using an example here this is my model i'm looking at the impact of four independent variables on my dependent variable. So in this case, the dependent variable is the exam marks and exam marks equal to study hours, the impact of study hours, the impact of part-time job hours, the impact of uh, sleeping hours and spending uh, amount of money spent on textbooks. So what are the impacts of these four independent variables on the exam marks. Okay, over here, I have a hypothetical data on 30 students and I've recorded the exam marks, the, the score that they have obtained in the exam and each of them, the study hours that they have spent to prepare for the exam the part-time job hours, how many hours per day that they work. Also, the sleeping hours, how many how many hours do they sleep in, uh, in one day? And how much do they spend on textbook? So, exam marks is a dependent variable. Study hours, independent variable. Part-time job hours is independent variable. Sleeping hours is independent variable. And spending on books. It's also independent variable. So let us run our regression test. So as usual, we go to data and select data analysis, regression. So we have the range and we have to select which range to be included. So y range represent the dependent variable. So the dependent variable here is the exam marks. Let's to be here. The x range represent the dependent variable so select the whole range for dependent variable starting with study hours up to spending on textbook so i have selected my dependent variable so i want to include the labels and the confidence interval is 95 percent or 0 0.05 significant level and output range where do I want to have my output range? Okay, let's say I put it here. 
it can be anywhere it's up to you and just untick this residual plot and the rest I don't need okay so this is the regression output from the test so what are the value that you have to interpret if you watch the last video you should know what are the values that you need to give specific focus so those are our square value standard error the F statistic and the uh, p-value the coefficients the p-value for the coefficients and the lower and upper confidence interval so before that let me convert all this value into two two decimal places so it can be easier for you to interpret let's format cells <coughs> category number two decimal places okay okay so i convert all this number into two decimal places the first the first value that you want to interpret here is the r square so if you can look at this output, the R square is 0 0.93. So what does that mean by 0 0.93? So I've convert all this uh, regression output into my PowerPoint slide. So the R square here is 93%. So what does that mean is that 93% of the variations of the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. So there is just another 0.07% not explained by the independent variable. So it is quite a strong model based on the R-square value of 93%. The second value here is standard error. So the standard error here is 3.39. So how do you interpret that 3.39? Meaning that it is very clustered. Okay, this is very clustered, it's very close to zero. It, it has a small standard error value, meaning the variation of predicted value to actual value is very small. <coughs> okay, third value here is the F test. So let's move to the F test. So the hypothesis used for the F test is for the null hypothesis. Beta 1 is equal to 0, meaning that the independent variable has no such effect on the dependent variable. And the alternate hypothesis is beta is not equal to 0, meaning that all the independent variable explains some variation in the dependent variable. And we also use the p-value, meaning that if our p-value is less than the significant level, significant uh, level is 0 0.05, if the p-value is less than that, we reject our null, if the p-value is more than the significant level, we fail to reject the now. So, the F statistic here is 87.58. Definitely, it is not zero. So, what does it mean if it is not zero? We reject the now and we accept the alternate hypothesis because the beta is not equal to, or the F stat is not equal to zero. And also, you look at the p-value here. It is significant because it is less than less than 0 0.05. So the p-value is less than 0 0.05, meaning that we reject HO and we accept H1. So what does it mean by H1? So H1 states that the independent variables explain some variation in the DV because the significant F value here is 0 0.00 so we move to the next interpretation is on the coefficients so uh, let's see okay testing hypothesis for regression coefficient so the now is our coefficient is equal to zero the alternate hypothesis our coefficients is not equal to zero so based on the p value okay so look carefully here Based on the p value, 
for study hours, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So study hours, so the p-value for study hours is less than significant level or less than 0 0.05. We reject the null for study hours, meaning that study hours is significant. Okay, remember that study hours is significant. Okay, coefficient number two is on part-time job. It has a coefficient of negative 0 0.02. But however, the p-value is 0 0.99. So 0 0.99 as a p-value is more than the significant level of 0 0.05. So for study hours, sorry, for part-time job hours, we fail to reject the null. If we fail to reject the null, meaning that the beta for part-time job hours is equal to zero, meaning that it is not significant. Part-time job hours is not significant for the model. It cannot be used in the model. Okay, coefficient number three is on sleeping hours taken by the student. Coefficient is 0 0.09, but is it significant? 0 0.95 is the p-value here. So 0 0.95 is bigger than 0 0.05, meaning that we fail again to reject HO, meaning that the, the beta for sleeping hours is actually equal to 0, and it is not significant. Sleeping hours is not significant because the p-value is more than the significant level. So we already have two independent variables which is not significant, part-time job hours and sleeping hours. So let's move to the last independent variable, spending on textbook. With a coefficient of 0 0.13, it has a p-value of 0 0.01. So if you do the p-value test, 0 0.01 is smaller than 0 0.05. The p-value for spending on books is smaller than the significant level of 0 0.05. Meaning that we reject HO when we accept alternate hypothesis. So meaning that spending on textbook is significant in explaining the variations of the dependent variable. So out of the four independent variables, we can conclude that only two independent variables are significant, which are the study hours independent variable and spending on books. So part-time job hours and sleeping hours are not significant to the regression model. Okay, so remember that only two out of two. So for the confidence interval level, also if you can look at uh, the value for the lower 95% and upper 95%, all of uh, the value here is not zero. So confidence interval, there is no problem with confidence interval interpretation, but we have problem with the p-value interpretations for part-time job and sleeping hours. So again, my conclusion here is that only two independent variables are significant that can be used for the regression model. So what I can conclude here, overall model, the overall regression model for my example here, exam marks <coughs> is equal to the intercept 45.09 plus 1.74 study hours plus the coefficients 0 0.13 spending textbooks. So what can I what can be interpreted from this regression model? 1.74 study hours, meaning that one unit of increase in the study hours. If you increase one hour of your study hours that will increase your exam mark by 1.74. You get it? Okay, let me repeat again. If you increase your study time for one hour, increase of one unit of study hours, will result in an increase of 1.74 of the exam mark. And the same goes with the spending textbook. If you spend an increase of 0 0.13 cent, sorry, a unit increase of spending textbook 
Meaning that if you increase one ringgit of spending for your textbook, that will result in an increase of 0 0.13 of your exam marks. So that is how, that is the way you interpret a regression model. Okay? So can you please try the tutorial and follow the same steps of what is ANOVA, what is R square, what is F test, and the coefficients hypothesis and come with the uh, regression model and interpret the regression model for the total, uh, tutorial, okay? So all the best. I will see you again in the next video. Thank you very much.